Hello everyone, this is JL and today I'm gonna make a redstone tutorial. So I'm trying to make this a little bit different from other tutorials because I think many of you already know the basics. For example, that redstone wire only extends 15 blocks, but there are some things which are a bit uncommon and yeah, I'm trying to show how they how, uh, how redstone works. First thing you should know is that there are two types of redstone powered blocks. A block can be strongly or weakly powered. The difference is that a strongly powered block can weakly power the adjacent blocks while a weakly powered block can't power any other block. So if I put a, a redstone torch in here, the wire is uh, activated and a redstone wire always strongly powers a block below it. So this stone block and the stone block, the next stone block are strongly powered, which means that the TNT is activated and the dispenser dispenses a dirt block. But the node block won't be activated because it only plays a node if it's strongly activated. And yeah, only uh, the stone block um, is strongly activated and the node block is only weakly activated. Yeah, you can see this if I just put a redstone torch here. Yeah, I've got a dirt block and the TNT is activated, but no sound from the node block. There are different ways to strongly power a block. The first one is that a block in front of a redstone wire is uh, strongly powered if the red redstone wire is just uh, a straight line or a cross. So if it's a curve, it won't work. Let's try. You will hear a node block. But not if I just extend it to here. No sound at all. And if I use the cross, it will also work. Yeah, you heard it actually. The second way to um, strongly power a redstone uh, a block is by a redstone repeater. A redstone repeater um, strongly powers a block in front of it, um, similar to a redstone wire. Yeah, it is a bit strange bug with the node blocks. They don't do not update until I um, switch it off, but um, normally they should be strongly powered. A redstone torch will always strongly power a block, the block above. So these torches will go out if I place a torch here. Um, and torches are a very good indicator if a block is strongly powered because they only switch off is the, if the block they are um, placed on is uh, strongly powered. This one will also go off. Yeah. And levers and stone buttons and pressure plates um, activate the, as strongly activate the block they are um, placed on. So this is strongly activated. Of course a pressure plate would strongly activate the, um, the block below uh, and so on. Yes, as you as soon perhaps noticed some um, items or some blocks need to be strongly powered uh, to work and others don't. For example, the dispenser doesn't uh, need to be strongly powered, but the node block does. Uh, I don't know why. Here you can see that redstone will not trigger anything which is on the left or on the right side of a redstone wire. So the dispenser won't be triggered and the TNT won't be activated and also the piston uh, doesn't move up. Only this piston here does because it's in line with the redstone. You can see here no explosion. A cross section wire will activate all blocks which are on the left, on the right or on the other two sides. So this all four TNT blocks will get activated because there is a cross section redstone wire between them and if I put a torch at the end of the redstone wire the repeater strongly powers the block below and yeah a big explosion will happen. Strongly powered blocks can power 
all adjacent blocks. So if I put a redstone torch in here, uh, yeah, the repeater strongly powers this bl stone block, which then uh, powers this redstone wire, this redstone wire, this redstone wire, and also this redstone wire. And it would, of course, also um, power our redstone wire here, but you would, yeah, then you couldn't see the one below. There's one exception with uh, powering uh, another redstone wire with a strongly powered redstone uh, with a strongly powered block. And as you can see, this block here is strongly powered by this redstone torch, and yeah, it powers this um, redstone wire. So this one is strongly powered, then this torch is switched off, so here this is unpowered, but um, redstone wire can't um, power redstone wire. This is to pre... Uh, I think so, um, that Notch uh, did this because otherwise you could just uh, make an internet uh, redstone circuit which is activated at once by um, yeah, just making this extending block this uh, would ca uh, act like a repeater but uh, it doesn't work so um, yeah the redstone repeater is powered but not the um, redstone wire because otherwise you could just uh, make a block every 15 blocks and yeah it would all instantly be activated because there is no delay if a, a strong a block is strongly powered. There's only a delay if a redstone torch or um, a redstone repeater is powered. It's still possible to make a button which seems to not be connected to anything but which already which actually uh, triggers something. In this case we will be blown up. Boom. <laughs> quite a huge crater. I used 14 TNT blocks for this. This is how this works. Dig a small hole and then place four redstone repeaters around one block which is one level below the surface. Then you put a redstone wire in the middle and you can put a block be above and then put a stone button on this block. If you press the stone button all four repeaters are activated and you can now hide them with placing blocks above the redstone repeaters. This is a very simple memory cell. It just memorizes a signal input and for example this stone button here just gives a signal for roughly 0 0.9 seconds but this wire stays switched on because um, yeah, this uh, redstone torch will go on if the wire here is activated and yeah, will stay so. Now this one is on and you could also um, switch it off again by simply putting a redstone signal here. I've made this construction here to sum up all the rules about uh, strongly and weakly powered blocks. Um, yeah, there's a signal going through this circuit. Um, if this block is strongly powered, the re a repeater is powered, and this block, and this block, and this, are, they are all strongly powered, which means that this block can also power the block below. Um, as it is across, um, the rules apply that a cross can strongly power all uh, the adjacent blocks to the side, so here, here, and also here, and here. Um, a straight line redstone wire can strongly power this and this block, for example, and uh, yeah, a curved redstone wire can't strongly power any block. And just the block it's uh, positioned on, so uh, the block below. Um, yeah. Redstone repeaters act as a diode, so um, they can only receive signal from this side, not uh, from the other side. 
So this one is not activated, but this is because it's, uh, yeah, it's placed other uh, in the other way. Um, yeah, and here the signal just goes around all the time. You can also stop it. So let's go on. There are also some bugs with the redstone wire. For example, um, the this repeater doesn't get updated if I delete this one. So it's still on, but uh, there is no signal or anything which could power this repeater. The I don't know if the red uh, if the block here is strongly powered, but if I uh, put a redstone torch to it, it's updated. So uh, this one goes off. But um, it's a bit strange. I don't know why this happens. Another um, bug is that even though this um, wire here looks to be uh, seems to be straight, so it should strongly power this block, and the torch should go off. It isn't straight. I don't know why. But if I put a torch here, it becomes straight, and this one goes off. Um, yeah, it's but it hasn't changed. It just uh, seems to be a bug and uh, very strange. Another bug I found out is if you power a TNT block with a redstone repeater, it won't get updated, as you can see here. But if you unpower it, the redstone repeater will update and uh, then the ad all adjacent blocks are updated and the TNT block will explode. Pistons just need to be weakly powered and you can make some cool things with this. For example, um, perhaps you saw this with in, in Ethos um, video before, but yeah, I will explain how this works. Um, if I place a block here, it will uh, power the piston, so it acts as a block detector. And it works by, um, yeah, the redstone repeater strongly powers the block if I place it here, which powers the redstone here, and strongly powers this block, which then weakly powers the um, piston and it's activated and pushes it away and because the piston arm uh, cannot be powered the signal stops and it retracts. Uh, if I would do this with a sticky piston it would uh, um, go forward and backwards all the time because yeah, as I said the piston arm can't uh, transmit the signal so um, this piston is switched off again and then it's pulled back and it's switched on again and uh, yeah perhaps you thought it's in ethos suite a redstone torch will make a sound and uh, be switched off it, if it's toggled too often in a short time interval so you can hear and now it's off for a few seconds and then it goes on um, if I set this repeater to 3, it um, doesn't, but um, if it's set to 1 or to 2, it's the uh, torch is switched too fast and it doesn't work correctly. Let's wait till the redstone torch gets updated, or oh, it won't. Yeah, but this time it works. Redstone repeaters have no problem with very short signals, so they don't make any sounds and you can make some kind of annoying machine with them. Uh, it's a bit difficult. We've got to uh, place the torch there for a very for a short moment.
Yeah, it's very loud. I've built a collection of the basic logic guides which you can uh, build with redstone and you can use them for example to build computers even or yeah you sometimes need just this, uh, them to make a small device working correctly yeah the first one is the invader inverter um, yeah in, it inverts the signal just a redstone dust uh, a redstone torch does this very well The second one is the R gate. Uh, yeah, it's also very simple. If you just connect a redstone wire, um, it will glow or it will be powered um, no matter where the source is from. So you can make an R gate with this. If this is switched on, it's on. And if this is switched on, it's also on. Here is the AND gate. It's just switched on if both levels are switched on so it yeah it's an end gate it's also very simple here is a redstone torch and here too and uh, this wire is only unpowered if both um, redstone torches are off that means you have got to pull both levers and here is an inverter so that you get the correct signal This is a bit more complicated, it's the so-called XR gate. If one of the two is switched on, it gets powered, but not if two are switched on. On, off, on, off, but now it's off. It's very useful to make, for example, um, yeah, uh, light switches. Um, you will have many of these XR gates in your own house. Because if you switch off, off or on the lights on one side of a room and uh, you want to switch it but you are on the other side of the room, there is an XR gate between the switches so that you can always switch them not only if one of them is one switch is switched off. Here is how it works. If I pull one of these levers, the block is powered and this torch gets uh, switched off, this uh, redstone wire gets switched off and this one um, gets switched on, so the signal line here gets switched on. And if I power the next one, this end gate um, switches off um, this, or switches on this torch, which means that here this signal um, both torches are switched um, off yeah and um, perhaps you can see how it works if i just switch it This is the last logic device I want to present to you. It's a pulse shortener. So if I press this button, uh, this wire here will be activated for roughly 0 0.9 seconds, but this one just for one tick. Did you see it? It uh, was activated very short. I can set the length uh, of the signal here with uh, changing the repeater delay. If it's set to 8, uh, it's just one tick. If it's set to 7, uh, it's two ticks and so on. If I set it to 2, it is uh, 7 ticks. Thank you guys for your attention and I hope this tutorial helped you a little bit to understand how redstone works and to make some own redstone creations and now I'm gonna blow this stuff up here let's see how it works and by the way I got a new micro perhaps you've noticed so you can now actually hear what's going on in the world and the note blocks and and you can also hear my voice a little bit better I hope so bye bye
and the seed of this world is redstone tutorial if you want to know. Yeah, it's lagging because of all the items flowing around here now, but yeah, it looks quite cool. <laughs> 